So most of you know me, I'm Cheryl Brackett, and I'm the state of Maine's transportation coordinator. Um, before that, I was a transportation director and operations director uh, for school for 32 years, and now I work for the state. Allie, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Alexandra Cookson. I'm the data quality trainer for the Maine Department of Education data team. And um, I primarily help with navigation in NEO, um, helping with identify and getting access to NEO uh, reporting. So that's my primary role. So why NEO? So data existed in many forms and locations uh, in the state and the data wasn't sharing with each other. So the state uh, came up with a solution and that was to combine the data into one system and automate uh, the data collection. I know a lot of you hate NEO. I do too, but it's one of those things that we kind of have to do. 80% um, of students in Maine ride the yellow bus to school and to home every single day. So it's an important role. We have about 3,400 buses in the state of Maine. So, Allie, do you want to take this one? Sure, yeah. So uh, before we get into kind of the NEO reports, one important aspect of having uh, getting into the reports is having access to your NEO transportation report. Um, so it is a module within the NEO system. You will need to have an access request submitted on your behalf if you do not already have an account. If you do have an account and you've forgotten your password, you can use the forgot password link to get that reset. If you do need a new account set up for yourself, um, you will have to have someone add you into NEO staff for um, to let us know that you are actually a staff member um, so that we can check those your credentials. Normally, the superintendent's office will do it or the superintendent's secretary will do it. Uh, one of those, it, and it's pretty simple for them to just give you the access to be able to go into NEO. So when you go into NEO, once you've got your, 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 your password and everything, if you open up NEO, you'll see um, the home page right here. And the home page gives you contact information. Um, it's got my my uh, telephone number and email up top and then Medem's help desk has now turned to um, what is it called Allie? <laughs> Medem support. Medem support. Yep so we're going to have to change that because it's no longer going to be called the help desk. So it goes through each of the reports and when they're due um, if you go onto the dashboard, I think we'll get to that soon, but the dashboard will give you all the directions that you need to know to do any of the reports for transportation. And here's the dashboard like I was just talking about. Um, you can see all the transportation uh, is um, bus approvals. We're going to go through each one of these bus approvals and uh, requests for new buses, uh, instructions for superintendents to authorize the purchases. It's all right there and they're very, very simple directions. Um, and but then again, if you have any questions, give myself or the Medem support desk a call. OK. And here are the forms that you are going to be seeing. Um, if you want to transfer a bus to another district, I know we just did that with um, a school system here in Maine. Um, when a, a school breaks away from uh, an SAU, a lot of times they take buses with them. So what the transportation director has to do at the sending district is send those buses through NEO to the new school and then the new school has to accept those transfers. But we'll be going through each each one of these one by one. Does anybody have any questions so far? No questions? OK, thanks, Allie. So this is what I was just talking about, the transfer of a bus to another school. And here are the directions for it. And those directions are right on the dashboard that we just saw. It gives you step by step about logging into NEO, uh, select the transportation module, hover over the vehicle, inventory and request. Um, and it gives you those step by step to transfer those VINs to another, uh, another school system. And then the school will have to take and accept them. And this is an EFT 16. Some of you have used these and some of you have not. 
there's been various reasons why we have to use an emergency bus request. Um, it, it could be that your bus was involved in an accident and it's it's not anything that can be fixed. It's been uh, totaled. Uh, it could be that you've received a number of new students coming into your school system and register and you need additional buses. It could be that you had a student with um, disabilities that needs uh, requires a, a, a bus lift for a bus lift for a wheelchair. Okay, so um, and there again, you've got the step by step uh, directions. Give me a call or send me an email so that we can talk and uh, figure out, you know, why you need the emergency bus request. Um, I've had a school system uh, ask me for a new bus when one of the bus drivers had a heart attack and passed away in the bus. None of the other bus drivers wanted to go into the bus and it was pretty close to being replaced anyways. It was just like a few miles off. Um, had another one have a suicide happen in the bus that was totaled. Um, had some uh, big repairs that would be cost prohibitive to a district and to put that much money into an older bus. So there's, there's various reasons why and it's best that you know you let me know so we can work together. But an emergency bus, um, you don't have to wait to be able to apply for in November. You can apply for it any time during the school year um, and try to find a bus that, you know, locate a bus with your vendor of the type of bus that's your choice. Uh, request for a new school bus. So when you want to request a new school bus, you're going to have to uh, put in that you either want to have an addition to your fleet, for one of the reasons I might have mentioned before, or it's going to be replacing another school bus. Um, we'll, we'll see later on there's certain criteria that we need to follow uh, for you to get a new school bus to replace one of your older school buses. Um, and just a reminder that the state does require you as transportation directors to be proactive on your maintenance of school buses because um, we won't we, we won't replace a school bus that hasn't been taken care of because of negligence. Any questions so far? Just take your. There aren't any questions so far. There is one question about the slides and uh, for the presentation. Um, Cheryl, if you don't, if you want to put them on your transportation page, that would be great. Uh, but I think that we also have all of these resources posted on the transportation resources page, right? I think in more detail than what you can even find here. So we'll talk about where you can find these resources at the end of today's presentation, and they would probably be more beneficial than the actual slides. This will be recorded and will be posted on the DOE data playlist, so you will have access to it after. Yep. Definitely. OK, so this is uh, this is the EFT 18. Uh, the, stu the superintendent has to go in once a bus has been approved by the, the state. The superintendent has to go in and approve the request. And once that's been done, you can go ahead and order your school bus. And following a few more uh, slides, we'll go through the bus purchase uh, data and uh, price list. OK. Bus cancellation. Now, this is really important because when I approve school buses, the money that we have to use for that purchase has to be set aside so we can't give it to another school that may need one. So, and I know it's really hard as a transportation director or operations director. I remember in November saying, well, we don't even have our budget ready. We don't know what the budget's going to look like. So, don't be afraid. You can apply for a school bus and you can be approved and then when the budget process starts if your school can't get the bus please go in there and do an EFT 19 and cancel the bus so that we can use those funds to possibly approve a, another school that hadn't been previously approved and it, it's really easy I mean there's, there's six steps to it right here and one of the steps is logging into NEO so it goes really fast but there again if you need help I'm just a phone call away And this is the EFT 20. This is for the new school bus or the replacement bus. And you'll have to give us information about the bus that you want to sell. And when you dispose of a bus, 
it's it's a local a local control so you can either put it out to bid you can scrap it in your nearest scrap yard uh, you can give it away to somebody you can sell it and then the money goes right into general funds so the bus that you're wanting to replace is going to be on this form and then you're going to put the new bus that you want with with the low bid base and then this comes to me and that's what I use to approve your school bus. Allie? So the EFT 21 is the superintendent authorization uh, purchasing school bus. So the biggest thing on this report is really just making sure that at the bottom you go in order. Um, so save, then submit, and then certify. If you don't do that, then the data won't actually save um, for this report. So you'll have to just make sure that you go in that order um, to make sure that it actually goes through. And the EFT 24, your mileage report, I'm going to let Cheryl talk a little bit more in depth about mileage. Uh, but the biggest thing also to remember on this report is just to go in order. Um, section one, uh, if you don't have all the data in there for section one, you won't be able to submit it. If you don't submit that, you won't have the subsequent sections. So just make sure that you're going in order and that all of your data is uh, included in each section as you go. Uh, right now, all of these reports, EFT 24 and the EFT 43, and then the third one, right now they're due October 15th. But after this year, they're going to be due by the end of July every year. And the reason we changed it to that is because the data team gets bombarded in the fall time because new students are added, new, new employees are added to the data systems. So for us, for the state purposes, this is going to be easier. You have all of your information by June 30, so it shouldn't be a problem for you to finish up your reports by the end of July. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? Not yet. Okay. So another thing that uh, the data team changed this year, so it would make it easier for school districts, is if you have contracted buses, you don't have to chase those companies down and find out the mileage or anything about those buses. This should make it a little bit hard. We got a lot of complaints from schools that uh, getting information from the contractors was very difficult and took up a lot of their time and they were very frustrated about it. So we are trying to make things, things a little bit easier and smoother for you. The EFM 43. This is another one that I was just talking about that's going to be due by the end of July. Now, this is the type of report that I get a lot of calls on because uh, transportation directors are nervous. They're like, well, where do I get the information? How do I do this? How am I supposed to know? This report is meant to be uh, in communication with your, your special needs director, uh, someone that takes care of the CTE students, possibly from the high school. And usually the, the McKinney-Vento uh, students are also managed through the special needs department. So this is one of these reports where, you know, you have to start a little bit early and grab all your information. But once you grab your information, um, it's pretty easy to go through. The directions are easy. Um, and what I tell directors, this is what I used to do to help me, because a lot of times I'd fill out these reports once a year, just like you do, and I'd forget. So I kept a folder, and from year to year, I'd put down, you know, I'd, I'd make some copies, pa paper copies, make some notes with a marker on why I chose this number and where I got the information and what it was so I can compare one year to the next year because sometimes that makes getting the information a little bit easier for you because when you do it once a year you forget from year to year so I suggest a folder yes paper not digital just so that you can keep your own notes for yourself not for anybody else unless you want to share them. Allie do you have any more on this uh, transportation report? I don't know. Nope, I think you got it. OK, great. So here are the qualifications for bus replacement, and this is not an emergency bus. That's that has totally different criteria like we just talked about. So 
the state won't finance passenger vans just because we feel that school buses are safer for students. But if you do have a passenger van and you want to replace it with a school bus or with a minibus, we will help you with that. So if you do have a van that you want to replace with one of our approved vehicles, it has to be seven years old and it has to have accumulated 100,000 miles on it. For a type C school bus, you have to have 10 years of life and at least 125,000 miles on it. And type D school buses will have 14 years of life and accumulated 245,000 miles. We might be changing that mileage a little bit. Uh, we've had two listening sessions this year so far. Um, we've, I, we've gone to Kittery, we've gone to Augusta, and next month we're going to Old Town so people can come in and talk to us about the transportation data and information that we, we collect and what they think would make more sense. Um, and then electric school buses. This one's a hard one to determine. We haven't determined it yet. The reason why we haven't determined yet, yet is that the state will help you for 15 years paying that school bus, but what does it have to have for mileage? And is it really gonna last 15 years? We don't know. We don't have much data on electric school buses. So this is something that the state's going to have to determine. Low bid criteria. This was confusing to people, so this is why I wanted to be transparent and just post it up there so that you guys could see what it looks like. It is on our web page. So when you buy a school bus, you can buy any kind of bus you want. You can use any vendor that you want. That's not a problem. But what the state does is we go out to the main companies and they put bids in on school buses. So not all of them bid on every size bus. If you look down the list here at all the diesel, the diesel buses, I'm pointing, I'm not sure why I'm pointing because you guys can't see that. But if you look across the, the chart, not every dealer put a bid in on, it, on all of the school buses, okay? So the bids that we have that are in green mean that those are the low bids out of the, the bus bids that went up for those school buses. But the ones that are in white are the only bids that came in on those school buses. Okay, so what we're going to do for the state is we're gonna say, okay, uh, let's just take for instance, the diesel 36 passenger, the bid price was 110, uh, 790. So DATCO, which is now actually DeVivo, put a bid in on that. So that's the bid that the state would go with. But if you want to buy it from O'Connor or if you want to buy it from WC Cressy, that's up to you. But the state is only going to give you that low bid um, if, if you decide to go with a, a bus that you know, there's, there's no bid on. Um, it's going to be invalidated. The state won't accept it. So there's one bus in here that's 53 passenger and there's no bid on it. So we're not going to we're not going to award any buses for 53 passenger conventional uh, for our replacement. Does anybody have any questions about that? I know that was really it's really confusing. I'll, I get a lot of calls about this. People are not really sure why they can't put the bid in that they're getting from the vendor. But we leveled the playing field. Every vendor was able to bid on every single bus here. And if you choose it, uh, to put something more on the bus than the base bid has, you can do that. Your district will be responsible for paying for the extra equipment. You'll still get the low bid. That's what your subsidies will be based on is the low bid. I don't see any questions, so I think we can move forward. And if you think of questions after this is over, feel free to call me or send me an email. No problem. Buying a school bus is a three year cycle. And this is something that <laughs> was very confusing. So what you do is like. Currently, the school year that we're finishing up right. Well, the year that we're finishing up right now, if you asked for a bus last November, you would have asked for FY 2025. So 
So step two is it would have been approved by me in January. Then stage two, the FY26, is when you're going to receive your bus and you're going to report it to the state. Then step three is when your subsidy actually starts. So if you were approved for a bus FY 2025, you've already got it ordered. You should receive your bus sometime within the next several months. But then your school district won't receive its first subsidy until a year after you've gotten your school bus. So the way that we're going to know that you did get your school bus is if you go in and you fill out the paperwork and then we know you got your bus so you'll be able to get your subsidies. Allie? So these are just some resources and opportunities that we have available for you. Um, I know that Cheryl has a tentative transportation director conference in March. Um, is it still tentative, Cheryl, or? It is, and um, at the summit, I did have um, some superintendents attend a class and they wanted to know if they could also come because they felt they needed to know this information too, because it's important. Um, you know, a lot goes into this, you know, when schools start working their budgets, um, maintaining their fleets, there's a lot to it. So um, anyone can come to it, but it's geared more toward the transportation director because I, I feel a lot of you could use some resources. Some of the ideas that I have is possibly bring in an attorney from Drummond Woodsum and talk about special need law when it comes to transportation. Another one would be an attorney coming in and talking about human resources, uh, vetting people, uh, giving people their due, due rights, uh, if you're writing them up, uh, if you're disciplining them for anything. Um, I want to bring the certification for transportation directors for the drug and alcohol testing, uh, because you should be certified in order to get that information from wherever you're testing your bus drivers and you're not really supposed to be doing anything with that paperwork if you're not certified. Um, so we'll be bringing somebody in on that. Or we'll be bringing somebody in on uh, possibly uh, secretaries, uh, radio operators, bus drivers, transportation directors. Um, you do need to have a certain amount of uh, classiness when you're dealing with the public. They're the ones that approve the school budgets. They're the ones that you see. So you have to represent your districts, your schools in, in an appropriate way. So I'd like to do some, you know, exercises on that um, and anything else that we can think of. If anybody's got any anything they'd like to see training on, just simply let us know. We'd be happy to help you. There's a, there's a great need in the state. There's a lot of new transportation directors. There's a lot of directors that have been here for a while and they need to brush up on skills or it's really a nice place to network because uh, you get to know directors from other parts of the state. You can share information. Um, it's just a really nice way to get out there and meet everybody. Where will details be coming from, Cheryl? Will they be in a direct email to transportation directors or? I will, yep. That's a good question, Allie. Thank you. Yeah, I will be um, sending directors uh, emails. Uh, I've started some of the paperwork on it. Um, it hasn't been approved through the state yet, so that's my next step. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do that and we'll put um, a notice going out to superintendents uh, about the district staff that are able to come. And I chose March because in the transportation director world, it's right in between basketball and baseball season. And there's no holidays that month, so you can get out and have a little bit of a break and, and network with people. This is how you find us in various ways. This is my contact information. Um, I don't have my phone number on there, but if you've got a pen, my phone number is 446-3019. There's a transportation website. And there's the data reporting website. And then if you have any questions, um, 
neo related uh, medums.support at main.gov. That is the new email. Previously, it was medums.helpdesk at main.gov, so it has been rebranded. Um, and then there are some resources for transportation reporting as well on the um, Medums support page um, of the DOE report, uh, DOE uh, website. So we have some resources there for you as well. And we'll take a few minutes to ask some questions. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask. Will you be sending out the slide deck for people to have? I can, and we will post it up on the web with this webinar. It won't be with the webinar because the webinar is going to be on YouTube, but I will have it. Um, I'll have Cheryl post it on the transportation pages. Yeah, we'll put a link in. Yep. Are there any other questions? Allie, do you have anything you want to add? I don't think so. Uh, we do have a question. Chris, you can go ahead and turn your microphone on and ask your question. Hi, Cheryl. It's Chris with Maine Association for Pupil Transportation. I don't um, know you. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to say that I really enjoyed this webinar today. I believe that it's great information for new directors. And I was wondering if maybe you could share the slides so therefore I could send it out to the MAPT members. Sure, no problem. I'll send, it, I'll send it to you today, Chris, no problems. Do you have anything else that you want to add that you may have heard from people that are uh, having difficult times uh, maneuvering in NEO? All I have to say is use resources, reach out. I mean, my email is always open as well as the MAPT president. You know, Cheryl's extremely, extremely helpful. You know, she answer, ask any question, she'll answer it right away. Remind me to pay you later for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add you to that tab. On a time there, I see you've joined us. Do you have anything? Donna works with Paula Gravel in finance, and she's the one that helps with these subsidies. Donna, do you have any? I'm putting you on the spot here because you didn't know I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, the only thing I would add is that if you are planning to apply for a bus, make sure you check with your business office, business manager first. Um, there are some schools that are called minimum contributors and where this funding goes through the formula, some schools would not be eligible because of that. So. If you do, if you're one of those schools and you put in for a bus, it ties up the money so others can't apply for it. Good point. Thank you, Donna. I'll build okay. off that a little bit too, Cheryl. Yeah. Um, so uh, Cheryl mentioned earlier building your team with your uh, uh, special education director, building your team with your finance director was just uh, kind of hit on by Donna here. Um, so your business manager, this is this is a team sport. That's our, our data team theme this year is that data is a team sport. Um, so rely on your people, build your team um, and ask as many questions of um, people who have the answers to your questions about mileage, about um, finance reporting. So rely on your in-district team as well. Um, and they might have some resources for you as well. Uh, David Fontaine, Fontaine. Yes, I do want to have the meeting in person. It's probably going to be a two and a half day event. Are there any more questions? Does anyone have any comments? You're welcome, David. And thank you, Donna. Well, I think uh, we're good unless someone has a question. Uh, Allie, thank you very much for uh, helping with this. And, uh, doing the slideshow. Um, anybody else uh, has, has any questions, uh, just give me a call, send me an email. If there's a class you'd like to see us uh, do next year, let us know. Um, communication is the best, the best way to do it. Um, and that's about it. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. We'll have the recording up for you as soon as we can. So keep an eye on that DOE data playlist uh, for the recording. Yep. Thank you Thank all. You.
All right. Bye-bye.